Okay, let's talk about sine and cosine functions and their graphs. So when we're talking about these, we really wanna focus on the quadrantal angles to go along with these. So um, the first one we have graphed here is sine, and we wanna focus on zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi, and these points that correspond with the sine graph. Um, we're gonna look at this real quickly um, as terminal points and on the unit circle and how those correspond with sine and cosine as functions. So these are periodic functions, meaning they repeat over and over again, both in the positive direction and in the negative direction. Sine works out to be an odd function and looking at its graph here on the right hand side, you can see if we pick out a point say at the very top and at the very bottom of one of these, um, that these are going to be corresponding to an odd function because an ordered pair say x, y over on the right hand side is gonna correspond with an ordered pair negative x comma negative y over on the left hand side, meaning this is symmetric with respect to the origin. Next, let's take a look at the cosine graph real quickly here. Um, again, the cosine graph, we really focus on these quadrantal angles. So zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi gets us back through one period and starts over again. Again, we can also kind of take a look at um, two points on either side of the y-axis. As you can see on these, if I just pick out two points on either side, equal distance from the y-axis. In this case, if we pick out a point on the right, that's x comma y, then a corresponding point on the left-hand side is gonna be negative x comma y. All right, each one of these graphs um, goes ahead and it's periodic, meaning that it repeats. For sine and cosine, they repeat every two pi. Okay, so the period is two pi before it repeats itself. You can plug in any positive or negative angle into these functions. So we say the domain is gonna be negative to positive infinity. And these oscillate in between negative one and positive one for their ranges. Um, now we can move these graphs around and we're gonna be talking about transformations as they get applied to sine and cosine functions. Um, at the bottom here, we also indicate symmetric with respect to the origin for a sine graph, meaning that it's an odd function and symmetric with respect to the y-axis. That's what we see up here on the cosine graph, points on either side that are mirror images of one another with respect to the y-axis. That means this is an even function. Now let's go back and think about Kind of a side example going on here. Let's think about the unit circle. Now we've already defined um, cosine to be the x value of any of these terminal points on the unit circle and sine to be the y values for any of these points on the unit circle. So let's, over on the unit circle on the left hand side, let's start at zero. Think about cosine first, which means our x values. So our x values start out here to the right hand side at positive one. And as we move in the positive direction, our x values decrease. So they're decreasing as we move to the left until here at this quadrantal angle, all right, that would be pi over two, we're gonna be at zero for our x value of that terminal point. So we continue moving in the positive direction. Notice that our x value continues to decrease until we get all the way over here at pi, it's gonna be an x value of negative one on our unit circle continue with our angle increasing in the positive direction. Now the x value is increasing. When we get to three pi over two, that's gonna correspond with a zero for our x value of that um, terminal point. And once again, continuing on till we complete one rotation around the unit circle, that's gonna be two pi all the way around. We're gonna get back to positive one for an x value. And then it repeats itself. So we can go around over and over and over again, and it's gonna repeat the same graph over and over again. If we switch over to our sine graph, you'll notice that this is the y values of this uh, terminal point. So our y values start at zero. As we move in the positive direction for our angle, what happens is our y value goes up until it gets to positive one. That's gonna be at pi over two. Continuing on with our uh, moving the angle in the positive direction, our y value goes to zero when we get over here to pi. Continuing on, it gets down to negative one for our y value on the unit circle. That's at three pi over two. 
and then finishes up our complete rotation here. As we get to two pi, it goes back to a, a y value of zero. And then it just repeats and repeats and repeats over and over again as you keep moving through this. So that's basically where the sine graph and previously the cosine graph come from as we take a look at these. Hopefully that helps out in connect, kind of connecting the dots in between where we were previously looking at the unit circle and these terminal points around the unit circle and how the x value or y value is changing as we kind of move our way around the unit circle and how those correspond with the cosine graph and the sine graphs. Hope this helps.